Hi, this is the Sign Chef. Since Neko and Wayek use almost the same syllabus, if not the same, I thought it wise to use this video for the correction to the questions of the just concluded 2023 Wayek Chemistry Practical Alternative B to serve as a revision guide for this year's Neko Chemistry Practical Examination. Point of caution, please don't cram. Just understand the concept and apply same to your Neko Chemistry Practical Examination. If you are yet to watch our earlier tutorials on the 2023 Neko Chemistry Practicals and they want to do so, we have added the links in the description. Also, if you like what we are doing in this channel, you can encourage us to do more by dropping a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell if this is your first time here. Alright, let's start. Okay, so we are done with question 1. Now question 2 which is the qualitative analysis. You are told that credit will be given for strict adherence to the instructions, for observations precisely recorded and for accurate inferences. All test observations and inferences must be clearly entered in this booklet in ink at the same time they were made. Okay. Now I'm taking time to go through this correction so that those of you that are preparing for GC will also have something to learn from. Right? So, you are told that G is an inorganic salt. Carry out the following exercises on G. Record your observations and identify any gas or gases evolved. State the conclusions you draw from the results of each test. A. Dissolve all of G in about 10 cm cube of distilled water in a boiling tube. B. I. Test the resulting solution with litmus paper. B. I. I. To about 2 cm cube portion of the solution in a test tube. Add sodium hydroxide aqueous. Then warm the resulting mixture gently. BIII to another 2 cm cube portion of the solution. Add dilute HNO3. Then to 2 cm cube portion of the solution. Add BACL2 followed by excess dilute HNO3. Alright, remember our G is or was ammonium carbonate, ammonium travel carbonate 4. So we are going to use that to answer this question. Good. So we are told to dissolve all of G in 10 cm of the sea water so if you draw your table test observations and inferences you rule your lines i won't do i don't have time to do that a you use the numbering given during the question dissolve all of g for the fact that you are asked to dissolve it means that you have to dissolve and there's no step where you are asked to filter right it means that g is what soluble fine so test one here is g plus 10 cm cube of distilled water so you divide this let me divide this anyway so what what, what will we notice here g dissolves g dissolves completely g dissolves completely to form a colorless solution so what would be our inference here that g is a soluble word salt were we told that g is a salt let's see yes we were told that g is an inorganic salt so we are correct you can use that in our inference that g is a soluble salt okay so the next test remember you always use your ruler to rule your line so that your work will be neat the next test we are asked to test for the effect of what b on what litmus so b bi the effect of g sorry on litmus so bi here says solution resulting solution so we're going to say solution of g because g is a solid solution of g plus litmus solution of g plus litmus yes g that's ammonium trazo carbonate 4 is a salt of a weak base and a weak acid and because the salt of a weak base and a weak acid when it undergoes hydrolysis right it's expected that the solution will be what neutral because it's assumed that both acid and base will have equal strength so they cancel themselves out but that's not what happens practically now what happens is that if you test with litmus the solution of g will turn red litmus paper blue right but it will not have any effect on blue litmus paper which means that the solution of g will be what alkaline now why is that so yes when the salt undergoes hydrolysis this acid formed here that's ammonium sorry trousers carbonate 4 acid is a very unstable acid right so as the acid is being formed it is almost being decomposed to water 
and co2 right and what happens the co2 gas will be what lost so by the time you are adding the blue litmus paper to the solution the co2 gas has escaped so there's no way it can have an acidic effect on that litmus paper but the ammonium hydroxide that is left the base or the ammonium hydroxide that is formed is more stable than the transcarbonic forward acid ammonium hydroxide only decomposes in the presence of what heat to release ammonia as far as there's no heat the ammonia will still remain in what solution and act as a what as a base so the effect of the ammonia in solution is what will now turn the red people's paper blue so thereby leaving the solution as an alkaline word solution and not a neutral solution why knew what they were doing there's no way they would just give you a same single salt and with a with a, with a carbon and expect you to just write neutral right they know so this is an exception this is an exception to the rule are we together so if you are not careful if you had written that it's neutral to litmus it means that you do not carry out the experiment or you don't understand the chemistry behind the experiment so here red litmus paper turns blue blue litmus paper remains unchanged I explained this in my tutorial, the tutorial I did on this topic, or sorry, on this practical. I explained clearly. So I don't know, if you did not watch, you go back and watch and you, you will get a better understanding. So what happens here means that solution of G is what is alkaline. Solution of G is alkaline. I know some people will come from my head and tell you that it's neutral, it's neutral. Did you carry out the test in your lab? Did your red litmus paper remain red? Or you are just assuming that that's what it's meant to be? So to about 2 cm cube portion of the solution in the test tube, add sodium hydroxide and then warm. Whenever you're asked to add sodium hydroxide to a colorless solution and then warm, there's every tendency that ammonia gas will be what evolved. Right? So solution of G. Solution of G, not solution G, plus aqueous sodium hydroxide, plus what? Heat. What happens? Evolution, not effervescence, evolution, because you are heating. Effervescence is the release of a gas without heating, while evolution is the release of a gas with heating or when heated. Okay? So, evolution of a colorless gas with a pungent smell or odor which turns moist it must be moist moist red litmus paper paper blue that's the gas that made the red litmus paper here turn blue right so what does that mean that the gas is what alkaline as an alkaline gas is what evolved now which gas is, is the most common alkaline gas known or used as ammonia gas right ammonia gas evolved right so which ions are responsible is responsible for producing what ammonia gas that's ammonium ion present nh4 plus present and you get your full marks there you get your mark for the color and odor of the gas and its effect on litmus paper right and also the pH of the gas, the name of the gas, and the ion present. So here, this question alone, you have like six marks here. Okay. The next question: to another two cm cube portion of the solution, add sodium hydroxide. Okay. Where the last question says to another two cm cube portion, you should add a BaCl2. Okay. So that's four. Two cm cube portion, if you like, of solution of G. Plus, you should also add 2 cm cube portion here. 2 cm cube portion. 2 cm cube. Okay, here yeah, you are not adding to the test with lead there. 2 cm cube portion of solution of G plus dilute HNO3. Dilute HNO3 is an acid, right? So, and this is a triazone carbonate 4. When you add an acid to a solution of a triazone carbonate 4, either the solid form of triazone carbonate 4 or the uh, solution of trouser carbon 4 what do you expect acid plus trouser carbon 4 will give us a form of what salt water and carbon 4 oxide and carbon that carbon 4 oxide will be seen in form of what of effervescence right so effervescence of 
a colorless and odorless gas that turns what the test for carbon fogs like lime water milky i showed you how carbon fogs like turns lime water milky in my last video on the test for carbon four oxide so if you have not watched that video check the link in the description right so which gas turns lime water milky so co2 gas is evolved right and what again what happens here which ion is responsible for co2 gas that's co3 2 minus present right you could also add that the gas turns moist blue litmus paper red but i don't think that they always allocate marks for that this is what they always use as a major test but let's just add and also turns moist blue litmus paper right that's gas is what acidic just add it though it's not as if just in case they're looking for where to award marks or deduct marks they will not find any okay so, and then lastly this test is actually using bacl2 it can actually be used to test for either the presence of sulfate ion that the trial sulfate six ion trial sulfate four ion or trial carbon four ion if it is a trial sulfate six ion the precipitate will not dissolve but for a trial sulfate four and trial carbon four the precipitate will always dissolve in excess acid so since you already know that CO3 2 minus is present. So here 2 cm cube portion of BACL2 aqueous white precipitate forms. Right? So here you suspect SO4 2 minus, SO3 2 minus, CO3 2 minus present. Right? Any of them. Then plus excess dilute hno3 plus excess dilute hno3 precipitate dissolves precipitate dissolves to form a colorless solution so co3 2 minus i see the so3 2 minus present but for the fact that we already confirmed that it is co3 2 minus here we may not add this guy here this so32 might just leave it as co32 minus right all right so that's that on the qualitative analysis let's move on to question three if you're able to learn anything from this tutorial give us a like subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell if you are yet to do so also don't forget to leave a comment remember when your absence makes no difference it means your presence added no value so keep making yourself valuable until i see you when I'll see you.